Thank you everyone uh, for joining this online seminar. Um, today we have uh, Efigia Solea from Queen Mary University of London uh, that will talk about non-parametric functional models. That's showing work with Bing Li and Huang Yao Li. So thank you for, for joining uh, for yours. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for the invitation to uh, speak about my research. Yes, so this uh, the topic of my talk is non-parametric functional graphical models via the functional additive partial correlation of Pareto. It's a joint work with Huang Yao Li and Bing Ling. Uh, okay. So this is the outline of my talk. First, I will I will introduce uh, graphical models and direct the graphical models for functional data. Uh, so that is graphical models whose observations on the vertices are random functions rather than numbers. And then I will discuss my work on non-parametric graphical model functional data via the functional additive partial correlation operator. And I will conclude this talk by summarizing the results and discussing future uh, research work. So in general, a lot of, of my research focuses on functional data analysis. Uh, this is a branch of statistics uh, that deals with the analysis and the theory of sample of curves or mathematical functions. So in FDA, uh, for each subject in the sample, a function or a vector of function is observed that varies over a continuous time interval T in R. So in this work, in this work, we consider the problem of constructing and directed functional graphical model in order to represent the statistical dependencies between p random functions. So like classical graphical models that uh, represent the associations between continuous random vectors, a functional graphical model is used to represent the statistical associations between the p random functions. So this work is motivated by the following electroencephalogram data set. So in this data, we have 77 alcoholic subjects and 45 controls. As you see here in this picture on the left, 64 electrodes are placed on the subject scalp. And then by each electrode, EEG brain signals are recorded over a period of time. So for each subject in the sample, a vector of brain signals, a vector of 64 brain signals is observed over time, which can be regarded as multivariate functional data. So based on this brain signal collected by the electrodes, our goal is to construct a functional graphical model in order to characterize brain network connectivity where the nose of the graph corresponds to the electrodes and the edges indicate associations among the electrodes. So mathematically, uh, we have this vector of Pirando functions defined on this time interval T in R. And suppose G is an undirected graph where V is a set of nodes that correspond to the components of X, and E is a set of directed edges. So the elements of E are an order pairs of distinct nodes I and J. So a functional graphical model is a statistical tool that describes the conditional independencies among the components of X according to this relation. There's no edge between node I and node J, if it only if the random functions i and j are conditionally independent given the rest of the functions. So in practice, we don't know the structure of the graph. The, L, the set E is unknown. So the statistical problem is to estimate E, is to estimate the edges based on a random sample from X. So here I have just a toy example. So on the right here, we have a graph of nine nodes, where at each node of the graph, we observe 100 observations of each function. 
But the node one, which is this node with the red color, we observe this 100 observations of the function x1 at the node two, which is this node with the green color. We observe another 100 observations of the function x2. So in other words, these curves here on the left is, uh, is my observed functional data, is my random sample from X. So based on these observed functional data, based on this functional data, my goal is to construct the following functional graphical model to characterize the associations among the nodes. For example, we see that there is no edge between node one and node nine. So the red cap, there's, um, there's no edge between node nine and node one. So node nine is the purple. Meaning that the random functions x1 and x9 are conditionally dependent given the rest. So function and graphical models have been, uh, have been first have been proposed by Gao et al, Zapata et al, and Zhao et al under the assumption that the uh, random function is a multivariate Gaussian stochastic process. So their, their idea is to expand each function uh, as a M finite dimensional Kahuna level expansion and extract these coefficients from the expansion. So if you do this for each xi, you obtain this. PM a dimensional Gaussian random vector with the following block precision matrix theta, which is defined as the inverse of the covariance matrix. So under the Gaussian assumption, the condition dependencies among the components of X can be completely characterized by the zero elements of this block precision matrix theta. So then the Gaussian assumption, this relation here is equivalent to this relation here, which says that under the Gaussian assumption, uh, we can estimate the structure of the graph by the sparsity structure of theta. So using this property here, they propose the following uh, group loss of penalized maximum likelihood approach in order to estimate a sparse theta. So this is a, a group loss of penalty because this is a matrix here, theta and JL is a matrix. So this is a group loss of penalty because it enforces the elements of this matrix to be either all zero or not all zero. So basically the FDGM is the generalization of the classical Gaussian graphical model developed by Yuan and Lee to the functional setting. So the Gaussian assumption offers this important advantage that encodes conditionally dependence by the precision matrix theta. However, the Gaussian assumption can be very restrict, can be restrictive in practice and is often violated in applications. For example, the data are often skewed and the Gaussian assumption precludes any relationships in the data that are non-linear or heteroscedastic. So therefore the challenge is to uh, relax the Gaussian assumption. So we want to relax the Gaussian assumption, but at the same time, we want to inherit the fundamental simplicity of the Gaussian dependent structure. So if we were to characterize uh, if, we, if we were to characterize this relationship here non-parametrically without any other structure, then we would need a computation of multi of p-dimensional kernels, which is well known that can cause the case of dimensionality and hinder estimation accuracy. So our goal is to relax the Gaussian assumption at the same time avoid the computation of p uh, dimensional kernels. So to relax the Gaussian assumption and avoid the computation of p dimensional kernels, uh, me and my advisor Bing Lee developed a fully non-parametric functional graphical model 
by replacing the criteria of conditional independence with a new criteria called functional additive conditional independence. So we select edges according to FAC, functional additive conditional independence instead of conditional independence. And FACI is given in this definition one. So we have U, V, and W are subvectors of X. M, U, M, V, and M, W are RKHs of additive functions of U, V, and W. And we say that U and V are additively conditional independent given W if this orthogonality here between cube based spaces falls. So essentially, the way that FACA is defined resembles the definition of the conditional covariance as the covariance between the residuals. So for example, if we take the additive functions of U and we regress it onto the additive functions of W, and then we take this orthogonal complement, this essentially gives me the residual. Similarly here, if we regress the additive functions of V onto the additive functions of W, then this orthogonal complement gives me the other residual. So if these two orthogonal complements, if these two orthogonal complements are orthogonal to each other, then we see that the functions U and V are additively conditionally independent given W. Essentially, FACI generalizes the notion of the conditional covariance, um, it generalizes the notion of the conditional covariance. So the idea is that uh, FACI satisfies the axioms of a semigraphoid shared by the uh, notion of conditional independence and the notion of separation. And therefore, FACI can be used here as an alternative criteria to construct the graph. So this is in fact why in the conditional independence is related to the graph in the first place. Conditional independence also satisfies the axioms of a semigraphoid graphoid that capture the logic of the, uh, the, that capture the structure of the graph, the logic of a graph. And that's why we relate conditional independence with the graph. So since FACI also satisfies the same set of axioms, we propose it to use it as an alternative criteria to construct the graph. The motivation to use FACI is that because unlike conditional independence, characterizing five non-parametrically does not require the computation of multi-dimensional kernels and thus avoids the curse of dimensionality. So then to uh, characterize the graph, we develop the functional additive precision operator. This is a, a, an operator defined on additive Hilbert spaces. And we show that characterizes FACI and can the structure of the graph. So therefore, we see that our model inherits the simplicity of the Gaussian dependent structure, but without requiring any distributional assumption. So another way to remove the Gaussian assumption with uh, while avoiding the case of dimensionality is to uh, assume a functional copula Gaussian graphical model. This model relaxes the marginal Gaussian assumption on the vertex of the graph by allowing monotony transformations of the scores to the Cancun level expansion. And another methodology is to allow the relationship uh, among the scores of the Cancun uh, level expansion to take an additive structure than in a, a linear structure. So in this work, we introduce and we construct an alternative fully non-parameter function graphical model based on a modified version of FACI. Our model removes the Gaussian assumption, but at the same time maintains the simplicity of the Gaussian dependent structure and avoids the curse of the dimensionality. We introduce a new statistical linear operator called the functional additive functional correlation operator. And we show that FAPCO characterizes FACI and is capable of capturing nonlinear relations without requiring any distributional or linear assumptions. We employ group loss operative techniques to characterize the FAPCO and get the graph. We derive estimation consistency of FAPCO and graphs 
selection of consistency and how the number of nodes increases with the sample size. And we apply our methodology, we demonstrate the methodology through simulation and the EEG data set from the alcohol study. So because of the nonlinear and the because of the functional and the nonlinear nature of our methodology, in our methodology, we consider the construct we, we consider the construction of two layers of functional spaces. The first functional space is a Cartesian product of these separable Hilbert spaces that contains functions of time. So this is my first uh, level functional space that generates the functional data. So given this uh, functional space, uh, X is, uh, my, is my vector of random function. So this is a random element from my probability space to this uh, Cartesian product of separable Hilbert spaces. So then uh, the second level Hilbert space is considered is an additive reproducing kernel Hilbert space. So it's the sum of these reproducing kernel Hilbert spaces with the following inner product, where each RKJs is generated by the following post-definite kernel, which is this by the inner product of the first of the of the first functional space according to this relation. So we say that these two functional spaces are additively nested, nested because the kernel of the second functional space is it this by the inner product of the first uh, functional space. And additively, because the second functional space is the sum of these reproducing kernel Hilbert spaces rather than the Cartesian product. Basically, this construction resembles the kernel trick in machine learning, except now my kernel, the domain of my kernel, is the first functional space and generates the functional data. So the second key in our methodology is to define the functional additive partial correlation operator to characterize a graph. So for each i, we assume that uh, every element, every function, the RKJs is square integrable. And then under this assumption, we can define the following covariance operators uh, according between functions i and j according to this relationship. Without a lot of generality, we can make the following assumption that the kernel of the covariance operator contains the zero function. Because you can show that the kernel co contains constant functions, and since constants are, in, are irrelevant to our problem, then without a lot of generality, we can consider the kernel to be the zero, that contains the zero element. So then by making H73 for each covariance operator, there is a unique operator with operator normal the most one that satisfies the following uh, property. So this operator is called the correlation operator between functions I and J. Basically the covariance operator and the correlation operators generalize the covariance matrix and the correlation matrix from the uh, to the non-linear and functional setting. So for each i not equal to j, we assume that this is a compact operator. Then under this assumption, um, this matrix, PPP matrix of correlation operators is invertible and has a bound and inverse. And therefore, the assumption two can define the following operator which is called the functional additive precision operator. And for NEIG, we can define the following functional additive conditional correlation operator between functions i and j given the rest. And when i is equal to j, we uh, define the resulting operator to be the functional additive conditional variance operator. So having defined all these operators, we can now uh, define the functional additive partial correlation operator. So under assumptions one and two, then the following operator 
is called the functional additive partial correlation operator between uh, functions i and j given the rest. Basically, uh, FAPCO can be understood as the extension of the partial correlation matrix of the nonlinear and functional setting. It measures a dependence between functions i and j given the rest. And also it has the additional advantage that is not influenced by their marginal variations, which have nothing to do with, with dependence. So then, the set, then uh, as I said at the beginning, uh, how we define, uh, we select edges according to functional additive condition independence instead of co classical condition independence. So here we use the following definition of FACI, which is equivalent to the previous definition, but we choose this definition because uh, it was easier to develop the objective function and the asymptotic results. So we have U, V, and W are subvectors of X. We see that the random functions U and V are actively conditioned and dependent given W. If and only if these covariance um, covariance between these functions is zero. So the idea is as before, so we have the additive functions of U and we regress it on the additive functions of W through this operator, which we call the functional additive regression operator. And then we, this difference gives me the residuals. And then we regress the additive functions of V onto the additive functions of W through FARO. And then we compute this difference, which gives me the other residual. So if the covariance between these residual is zero, then we see that the functions U and V are additively conditionally dependent given W. So we see that essentially FACI generalizes the idea of conditional covariance. And this operator is called FAR because it resembles the uh, regression coefficient matrix uh, at the, uh, the multiple linear setting. And then we define uh, our graph in this definition form. We, yes, we essentially uh, define our graph. So we say that this subset is called the neighborhood of the node I with respect to functional added condition independence. If an I is the smallest graph, is the smallest set such that given the neighbors, given the nodes in NI, XI is independent, additively conditioned independent of the rest. Essentially, the, this definition formally defines our graph, and our, gra and our goal is to estimate G such that X is associated with G uh, with respect to functional additive condition independence. So if X is associated with the G with respect, with respect to FACI, so according to this definition here, then we have the following relationship that the J element of Faro, which is obtained by regressing uh, each node XI on the rest, is the zero operator. If I don't leave, I and J are actively conditioned independent given the rest. If I don't leave, uh, J and, and there's no edge between node J and I. We also show the following uh, key relationship. So from the first, this relationship here, from this relationship here, we have the following results. So if X associated with G with respect to FCI, then there is no edge between node I and node J, if and only if the I and J element of FAPCO is zero. So they are both similar to the partial correlation coefficient to the partial correlation matrix for the Gaussian distribution. Fabco characterizes the structure of the graph, but without assuming the Gaussian assumption. And due to the additive nature of the methodology, estimated Fabco does not require the computation of p-dimensional kernels and thus avoids the case of dimensionality. And then uh, to estimate the, the sparse distraction, to estimate the zero FAPCO, we propose the following penalized objective function subject to the following group lasso penalty. 
where this function is, is given here, and all these are the estimators of the uh, of the operate of the linear operators. And I given here, so this is the estimator of the covariance operator. Here we uh, this is the estimator of the correlation operators, where this is the reach penalty that allows to go to zero as the sample size goes to infinity at the specified rate. And this is the estimator of operators for the uh, functional added precision operator. So therefore, so if R hat is a minimizer of the penalized objective function, then we propose to remove an edge if the Hilbert meet norm of this estimated operator is uh, not uh, equal to zero. So we also derive the consistency of PAPCO and graph estimation of consistency properties. Uh, we derive the theoretical results assuming that the random functions are fully observed for all t. And we allow the number of nodes p to diverge to infinity with the increased sample size. In order to derive the consistency of PAPCO and graph estimation of consistency, first we need to derive uniform convergence rates for the following as empirical operators. Uh, so we begin with the following lemma that provides a concentration inequality for the elements of the covariance operator. In order to derive the concentration inequality, we need the following assumption three, that the kernel is uniformly bounded. And this assumption is satisfied by many uh, commonly used kernels. So we need this assumption three because we, in order to derive lemma one, the consideration um, bounds for the, uh, for each, for the covariance operator, we need to use some Bernstein state inequality and the uh, Bernstein state inequality. So we had to use, we need to use this technical assumption. And using lemma one and the, using the following two assumptions. So assumption four says that the covariance operator is, is bounded, is up, uh, bounded from below and above. And assumption five says smoothness assumptions uh, in the relationship between functions i and j. So these are technical uh, assumption five is a technical assumption in order to address the problem that the inverse of the covariance operator is unbounded. So the covariance operator. It's a human version of operator, so it has an unbounded inverse. But in the proof, the inverse always appears together with this operator. So there are four assumptions five requires that this product here is a bounded operator. So we want this assumption here in order to derive convergence rate when we are dealing with um, compact operators whose inverse is unbounded. So under the previous assumptions and using lemma one, theory one derives the convergence rates of, of the correlation operators. And uh, uh, theory two derives the convergence rates for the um, uh, correlation of pair, uh, over the inverse of the correlation operators. But we also need to assume at the following assumption that says that each a uh, node is not too correlated with its non-neighboring nodes. And this, again, this is here should not be equal. So this is not equal, sorry. So this is equal to OP and this is equal to OP, but this equality here is wrong. Um, so uh, using the, the previous convergence result, uh, theory three establishes the consistency of the estimated FAP cost. So if assumptions want to see it satisfied, and if these tuning uh, parameters goes to zero at this specified rate, then the estimated FAP cost converges to the true FAP cost at this rate of convergence. And finally, uh, we also derive uh, crown selection consistency. Uh, in order to derive model selection consistency, we need the following concrete condition. 
This is uh, the a classic the coherent condition uh, in order in that is needed that is required in order to prove the consistency for the group lab. So, but it's stated at the operator level and says that uh, it bounds the amount of influence that the neighbors can have on a given node. So under assumption seven, we can derive theorem four, which gives um, the consistency of the estimated graph. So if assumptions one through seven are satisfied, and if this unit parameter goes to zero at this specified rate, then the minimizer, the estimated FAP cost satisfies the following property uh, with probability tended to one. Okay, so we also derived perform some simulation studies. Um, we derived the implementation algorithm, perform some simulation studies. So, uh, for the to derive the implementation algorithm for FAPCO, we use a coordinate representation system with finite dimensional Himbe spaces. So, the idea is to represent the linear operators in finite dimensional matrices using coordinate representation. We compare the performance of FAPCO with the Gaussian method of Giao et al., the Copula method of Soleil and Lee, and with the other non-parametric estimation method that uses the functional added precision operator. So uh, the idea is we remove an edge from the graph if the ij element of FAPCO is zero, is uh, less than this threshold constant. So given an edge set E, we generate the functional data according to the following um, equations, where F is the link function, the error here are generated uh, using the Brownian motion covariance kernel. Uh, and these coefficients here are the standard normal random variables. For the observed time points, we consider 10 equally spaced Grid time points between zero and one. So we consider three different choices of F, a linear model, a quadratic model, and a stochastic model. The underlying graph is generated as a hub structure. The sample size N is taken to be 100, and the number of nodes is taken to be 100. So we construct the first functional space using the Brownian motion covariance kernel, and we construct the second RKH, RKHS space using the Gaussian radial basis function. And so here we see the ROC curves for the linear model on the left, the quadratic model in the middle, and the Droskinasi model on the, on the left. We see that the linear model um, the Gaussian methods, the, um, the FGGM with green and the copula method with blue, so the linear methods, slightly outperform the non-parametric methods. Uh, for the quadratic model and the deroscedastic model, we see that the two non-parametric methods, the red and the black line, outperform as expected, they outperform the linear method. And we see that in the Derosgenasi scenario, uh, FABCO also outperforms the other no parametric method table. And finally, we apply our methodology to the EEG data set from the alcohol studies. So we have 77 alcohol subjects and 45 controls. For each subject, EEG brain signals were reported at 256 time points over a uh, one second time interval using 64 electrodes placed on the subject scalp. So our goal is to construct the function graphical model to characterize associations among the electrodes for the two groups of subjects, the alcoholics and the controls, based on the EEG functional data collected from the electrodes. So he, uh, figure three shows the estimated brain network constructed by FAPCO for the alcoholic and the control groups. Uh, so with, for both groups of subjects, the electrodes are uh, densely collected and they're and densely uh, connected in this region of the brain, the frontal region of the brain, 
whereas um, nodes in other regions are sparsely connected. And we also derive the differential plane network where the red line represent the edges that are in the alcoholic group, but not in the control. And the blue lines indicate the edges that are in the control group, but not in the alcoholic uh, group. So from this graph, we see that the alcoholic network includes more connected edges in the central region relative to the control, which is this. So to summarize, uh, in this work, we propose a non-parametric functional graphical model that relaxes the Gaussian assumption, but inherits the simplicity of the Gaussian dependent structure. Our model is fully non-parametric and is based on the construction of nested cube spaces. It's capable to capture non-linear and heteroscedastic relations that cannot be captured by the Gaussian or the popular Gaussian models. However, it relies on FACI instead of, of classical condition independence. So the idea of FCI is that it's a FCI is a new statistical relation that captures the spirit of condition independence, but without resorting to multidimensional kernels. We also develop new asymptotic developments, such as graph consistency, uniform convergence rates, allow the number of functions P to grow with the sample size. And through simulations, we show that our methodology performs well when, there are, when the interactions are non linear or heteroscedastic that cannot be captured by the Gaussian or popular Gaussian models. So, just a future uh, direction. So, uh, this, uh, the project that I just talked about, uh, aims to construct an undirected graph. So, undirected graphs can only re reveal association and claims, it cannot be used to infer causal relationships. So this work can be extended to estimate a direct and graph. So suppose G is a directed asigling graph, so there are no directed cycles, and V is a set of nodes that correspond to the components of X, to the uh, P functions, and E now is a set of directed edges. So now the elements of V are ordered, pairs of distinct vertices I and J. So the goal is to estimate as here in this picture we see a directed uh, a signaling graph so now the edges have arrows they have directions so our goal is to estimate these directions based on a random sample from x so similar to the classical setting we can associate a dark g can be linked we can associate a dark g to FACI through the so-called Addy faithful net conditions, which is the following. For any I and J, for any node I and J, we see that node I and node J are these separated by the set C. If XI uh, are additive condition independent of XJ given uh, XS, given the vectors in S. So, and then using the additive faithfulness condition, we can estimate the DAC or its Markov equivalent class by combining FACI using FAPCO with the PC algorithm. Um, and that's the end, conclude my talk. Uh, thank you. And I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Effie, for for your for your talk. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I really enjoy it. Um, uh, well, uh, we have we have time for a couple of of comments or question. If someone in the audience wants to jump in or write in the chat, any anything. Um, I had I had a comment uh, uh, regarding the, uh, the 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 undirected versus directed uh, ah, yes, situation. Yes, the last, uh, yeah. Yeah. 
you you address that in the so you 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 already thinking about uh, extending this to the yeah yeah, uh, yeah. so the idea is to define this additive faithfulness so the classic yeah. classical faithfulness condition is based on classical condition depend so the idea is to propose the additive faithfulness condition but by replacing condition and dependence with ACI. And the estimation can be done using the PCR algorithm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, just, just uh, it, it was in my mind where you were talking, but then you addressed this. Yeah. Uh, I, ha I have a, another comment is uh, if, if, so you have several, uh, you invert several operators. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. how do you how do you deal with that? For instance, particularly I was looking at in definition three. Mm -hmm. Because I, I guess that when you when in practice, as you work with matrices, yeah. you have like a finite dimensional representation of the operators. But from a theoretical perspective, for instance, that operator, how, how do you assure that is uh, that the that the inverse is bounded as well? Well, Point. in practice, we have finite, so we have finite rank operators, so they are invert, divertible. Because mm -hmm. in practice, we we project the functions into few coefficients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. I know. In practice, you, you you can you can deal with that. I was wondering if you. The, these are not if... these are, are unbounded operators. Uh, so as I say here, in theory, you mean? Yeah. In theory, uh, yes. So the covariance operator has an unbounded inverse, but uh, in the proof, we that's why we need this technical assumption five. In the proof, okay. of course, this inverse comes together with this. So basically, we assume we don't assume the inverse is bounded. We are, but we assume that their product is bound. Ah, uh, okay. 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 We assume that okay. the inverse exists, but we don't assume that it's bounded. Because yeah, that's yeah, yeah, a I... strong assumption. Yeah, definitely. Great, great. Uh, let me see something. Uh, yeah, I have yeah. I think so, it is... the question is Is FASI strong enough to imply that? Conditional independent implies in most applications. Uh, let me see. So we have a theorem in the paper that uh, under the copula assumption, FACI implies conditional independence. So I think I have the theorem here uh, in my back slide. Yeah, so I have this proposition that shows the relationship between FACI and conditional independence. So, so this is wrong. Relation between conditional independence and FACI. So if X uh, follows a, it's a copula or a Gaussian random element, and if the RKJS is dense in the L2P, then ACI implies conditional independence. And if the RKJS is spanned by the copula transformations, so if the kernel is generated by the copulas, then ACI is equivalent to conditional independence. So essentially in practice, if we use the Gaussian rating basis kernel function, then ACI implies is equivalent to condition, implies conditional independence. And also Li Chun and uh, Li Chun, who propose ACI, they show that uh, numerically, computationally, ACI and condition independence are equivalent. So this uh, is the only relation that they have, uh, only under the copula Gaussian distribution. Without the copula Gaussian distribution, there is no, they don't have any, the condition dependence not related they don't have any relation. But they, the idea is that both satisfy the axioms of the semi graphoid and that they cannot be associated with a graph. They can be used as a criteria to construct the graph. 
Okay, okay, okay. Um, I hope I hope that answers your question, Kai. Um, uh, I think we are almost. Uh, you have to teach as well you now in ten minutes, right? So, yeah. Uh, so I think I, unless there is another brief comment or question, let's uh, thank again the speaker for 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 the thank talk. You. And... Thank you for the invitation. And and thanks thanks again for joining. I I think I will upload the talk to to YouTube as soon as possible. So mm -hmm. let me 